So let's start. Uh, if anybody uh, checks, uh, some newcomer, please tell me. <laughs> okay. Well, so the title of, um, because uh, the text is written uh, in Russian, uh, I have to uh, translate uh, certain points. So the title of the lecture is um, Solution of uh, the Inverse Problem for uh, Euler Type uh, Equations. Um, just in case uh, I will tell, I will read, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I will write in English uh, the name of uh, Euler. Well, so okay. so um, you see uh, in the title of the uh, of the screen, uh, you see um, uh, the error type equation. It's a partial differential equation uh, in uh, two uh, variables, t and x, and uh, one matrix valued uh, unknown function, v capital. Uh, here, a and b are uh, diagonal matri uh, matrices, um, uh, which uh, can be arbitrary. Um, we are looking for such uh, uh, solutions uh, uh, which are mm, represented by symmetric matrices. Uh, v upper t uh, is equal to V, where upper t denotes uh, uh, transposing. And, um, uh, and um, vanishing uh, diagonal elements. Uh, last lecture, I explained um, how, uh, in, uh, in what way such equations uh, come from, um, uh, from earlier uh, uh, equations of uh, free rotation of uh, rigid body. And now, um, uh, in the present lecture, I, uh, uh, will, con uh, I will focus um, on the way to resolve, uh, on the way to resolve uh, this equation uh, with no regard uh, to any origin of this uh, uh, equation. So, Let's let's start. Let's start. The first uh, completely uh, obvious remark is that uh, for um, any uh, for an arbitrary uh, matrix valued function v uh, and uh, three diagonal. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, we consider uh, a matrix valued uh, function V and uh, three um, uh, diagonal matrices, uh, A, B, and uh, bar X, <coughs> which play a different role. Bar X um, is a set of uh, arguments of the function V, uh, while A and B play a role of uh, coefficients. So um, for any V and any diagonal A and B, uh, the commutator AV and BV is given by uh, this simple formula. So we uh, just uh, have to multiply the element uh, and uh, element 
i j has the difference uh, a i minus a j in the first case and b i minus b j in the second case. Uh, now, um, let's restrict uh, let's restrict v um, uh, to the two-dimensional uh, plane uh, x bar equal to a x plus b t, where uh, x to k, no, not x to k, uh, x upper k are just um, elements uh, on the diagonal of um, bar x. And uh, x without uh, any index and t are just uh, uh, complex numbers, parameters, arguments. Well, then uh, our equation, uh, then the left part of our equation, just by simple uh, calculation, uh, excuse me, mm. Just by simple uh, calculation, the left part of, uh, of the equation is equal to this sum. We just um, have take the partial derivatives. Uh, this symbol uh, denotes the partial derivative of uh, v i j uh, in x upper k. And uh, we have to multiply it by this bracket. This is a trivial uh, calculation. Also very trivial calculation gives that the right hand side uh, um, part is equal to, um, to the sum uh, uh, of uh, let's say two sums um, uh, gives two sums. The first one uh, has the same coefficients as we have already seen, but uh, there are vi, uh, vi upper k, v lower k g instead of partial derivatives. And just sum, just the sum of partial derivatives of uh, Vij multiplied by uh, uh, multiplied by the number, this number with Ij uh, the same as uh, for these ones. Um, to be more precise, to be more precise, uh, I was not completely precise. Uh, for example, on the left hand, uh, on the left hand uh, side, we have uh, a matrix, and on the right hand side, we have uh, its ij element. So. I was not right. I had to um, I had to write as follows. I had to write as follows. Mm. Actually, don't remember where. Uh, Okay, no problem. Uh, I had to write, for example, uh, uh, in the second case, I had to write uh, a v b v 
uh, the outer commutator, IJ. I had to, uh, to write here that this is the element, sorry, um, that this is the element uh, with indices i and j. Well, um, so um, in order, uh, in order, uh, the matrix value function v uh, gives the uh, gives a solution to this equation. We only need uh, that this partial derivative be uh, mm -hmm. we only need that um, this partial derivative is equal to um, this product. It's written here. And um, that this sum uh, would be equal to zero for any uh, uh, for any uh, pair uh, i and j. Uh, these two conditions we uh, these two conditions we um, obtain using. Uh, the inverse, uh, the uh, inverse um, problem uh, for Euler equations. This is uh, this to can uh, to obtain these two conditions. Uh, this is why we need uh, the inverse. Uh, 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 the inverse uh, spectral method um, for this and many others equations. Okay, uh, what do I mean uh, by uh, spectral data? I mean the following. First of all, uh, gamma, a Riemann uh, surface of uh, uh, a Riemann surface of genus G. Uh, I mean with a complex structure, uh, compact, so uh, in other words, uh, a, uh, a compact uh, complex algebraic curve. Then uh, a set of uh, endpoints uh, on gamma. So P1 and so on Pn Mm, is a set of uh, mutually different points uh, on gamma. Uh, K1 uh, uh, to minus one, Kn to minus one uh, is uh, the notation for local parameters uh, in the neighborhoods uh, of these points. Uh, I mean the following. I mean the following. Uh, by local parameter, uh, we normally uh, we normally mean uh, some z, a function, a function in the neighbor uh, in the neighborhood of a point, such that uh, say this point would be p, such that z of p. Uh, is equal to zero. Uh, uh, in this um, in this context, it's traditional to um, consider uh, uh, inverse quantities uh, to local parameters. So, k one and so on, Kn uh, are inverse quantities to local parameters um, uh, as the points P1 
one so on pn which uh, and uh, we have such a strange for the first glance uh, situation uh, that uh, k1 minus 1 of p1 is equal to k n minus 1 to minus 1 of p n uh, is equal to 0. Uh, it's uh, a little bit uh, unusual uh, notation, but uh, completely traditional uh, in the context of uh, inverse spectral problem and its applications to differential equations. Uh, okay. So, um, we have, um, we consider also D a non-special divisor uh, on gamma of degree uh, genus plus N minus one. Uh, let me recall that uh, non-special means that um, uh, the dimension uh, the dimension of the um, uh, of the space of meromorphic functions f such that uh, f plus d is non-negative. The the dimension of this space. Uh, is equal to uh, degree of d plus genus, uh, sorry, um, uh, minus genus plus one. This is one of definitions uh, of a non-special divider. Uh, and finally, uh, uh, finally, uh, I will tell uh, a definition of the uh, main, main hero of this uh, uh, story, sorry. Uh, a Baker uh, Baker Heiser function uh, psi g. So we uh, assign such a function to uh, any point, any point pi uh, uh, We assign such a function to any point to any point let's say pj and uh, this is the only uh, up to uh, uh, proportionality uh, function um, uh, function on uh, gamma um, which is uh, meromorphic outside the points p1 and so on uh, pn has uh, the pole divide uh, has the pole divisor d as d as uh, as a pole divisor, and uh, the following uh, asymptotic behavior at the points uh, p i. So uh, psi upper j. Uh, is equal to um, uh, 
some, some number, some complex number. Um, by um, uh, sorry, uh, so this, uh, uh, this is an asymptotic behavior of uh, psi uh, upper j at the point uh, p lower i. So um, uh, the main uh, uh, the main uh, fact, uh, factor of this um, asymptotic is this uh, exponential factor, uh, where k i is um, comes from uh, from local parameter at the point p i uh, x upper i. Uh, is um, the coordinate the coordinate number i of the um, vector bar x or let's say uh, diagonal element uh, i is the di uh, diagonal element of the diagonal matrix bar x uh, delta i j is a Kronecker symbol uh, Vij is some uh, scalar function of bar x depending on i and j. Uh, and again, uh, in this bracket, uh, k, uh, uh, ki again comes from uh, the local parameter. Uh, what is uh, written not completely correct here is that x bar is um, just a uh, just a set of x upper one and so on x upper n, but uh, actually x bar. Oh, sorry. But actually, uh, x bar is diagonal of x one, so on x n. Okay. I will show, and this will, will be the main idea of this lecture, that if we take uh, if we take matrix V uh, formed by elements V i j, then we get uh, mm, then we get uh, a solution to uh, to to our Euler type equation. Uh, and uh, here I uh, I would like to ask um, whether the, the, uh, there are any questions. Whether there is anything not clear. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yes. Please. Uh, 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 it, it, Okay, uh, um, uh, who is asking? Nadia? Uh, uh, I see two voices. Uh, uh, and me too, and me too. Uh, okay. I want to ask about uh, these functions V. Uh, all uh, are... Uh, <sighs> I'm sorry, I... Uh, ask uh, just, uh, Uh, или решение, ну, в смысле, то есть мы берем uh, функцию, uh, вот отсюда мы берем функцию v, тогда это решение, да. Да? Да. А, а обратно, в смысле, то есть любое решение можно так представить? Или... Uh, это, будет, это будет действительно так, uh, 
Но я этого показывать не буду. So, uh, uh, the question was uh, the following. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, what, I, um, what I claimed uh, is the following. If we take this spectral data, including uh, uh, the set of fu uh, functions psi upper j, uh, and take and form V capital from these elements uh, Vij in expansions uh, of psi j, then uh, we get a, a solution to, to the error equation. This is what I claimed. The question was uh, whether um, uh, uh, the inverse uh, is also true. And I say yes, but uh, I will not show it. Okay, may I go on? Sorry, um, may, may I ask a uh, question? Yes. Sorry, what, sorry. What, what, what does uh, epsilon i mean? Sorry, I cannot read the Russian, so I don't know what does I, epsilon uh, i mean. I is the index of, uh, of the point p. We take, um, we take uh, the asym uh, asymptotic behavior, we write down the asymptotic behavior of psi upper j okay. at, at the point pi. Okay. Okay? Okay. So so the psi g is a, is a mirror morphic at the mark point or not? I, I didn't quite uh, get it. Uh, no. Uh, psi j um, is not mirror morphic. Uh, uh, psi j is mirror morphic uh, at the points of the divisor d. Okay. Uh, it, uh, it has uh, uh, poles, uh, um, poles there uh, of the order okay. uh, given by multiplicities of the divisor. Oh, so, I see. And thank you. Uh, no, no, it's uh, not the end uh, of the answer. And um, uh, it is it is the main uh, point that. At the points P1 and so on, Pn, uh, Psi has what is called uh, exponent, uh, uh, essential singularities uh, in, complex, in complex calculus. Okay. Uh, and this means that uh, the, main, the main factor is exponential. Mm -hmm. It, it uh, exponentially, exponentially depends uh, on, uh, on the inverse uh, to the local parameter on the ki. Mm. So it, uh, it's a fast increasing, uh, uh, fast increasing function uh, as a point p, uh, pi. Okay. 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 Uh, and one more uh, question, uh, yes. maybe stupid. Uh, psi, psi j is, is the unique function on uh, gamma, uh, but uh, it has uh, index j. What means uh, j if it, uh, if it is okay. unique? Um, okay. Uh, every point is good. Uh, it's good to clarify everything at this point. Uh, to every point pj, we assign function psi j. How we give it? Uh, we claim it's the only function, it's the only function uh, which uh, is meromorphic outside all the collection P1, Pn has poles, uh, pole divisor D uh, and um, exponential and uh, the function number J at the point P1, 
pi i has this expon uh, has this exponential behavior. Yes, yes. Oh, uh, but uh, where uh, the dependence of p j? I I understand that uh, this is uh, uh, decomposition in uh, p i, uh, but okay. where yeah, okay. where p j? Uh, or... uh, uh, Nadia, ask it in Russian, please. Ну, я не понимаю, где зависимость от P G. Ну, в смысле, то есть я вижу вот в уравнении J. Вот, но я понимаю, что это симптотики в P и тех. А, собственно, откуда, где зависимость от P G? Ну, что значит, что P G рассматривает? Ну, в смысле, нет, в Также, ну, мы зададим в точке G другие функции, в точке E там другие функции, а если и все G изменится, это будет другая функция, она, у нее будет другое разложение. В смысле, мы стартуем с V, так, то есть с, с V, Нет, G, мы стартуем I. с точек, а V получаем. Again, знаете, uh, я... Again, it's very important. Uh, I will repeat it uh, for the third time uh, in a little bit different form. A little bit different form. So, um, uh, we would like to obtain uh, a solution V to uh, our uh, error type equation. I will not repeat it here, okay? We would, what we would like uh, to obtain is a matrix uh, is a matrix valued function v what is the source uh, what is the source uh, uh, where uh, uh, where does it come from it comes from uh, the spectral data which i listed here riemann surface a set of points p points p1 and so on pn Local parameters at these points. Non-special divisor of a certain degree. Uh, I claim, but not proof here, because uh, in some sense it was uh, it has been proven in the first. Uh, um, uh, in the first part of the uh, course last semester. On the second, uh, uh, on the second hand uh, side, uh, it is a general principle which can be easy, uh, easily found uh, uh, in the literature. I can recommend so certain literature. Uh, it's a general uh, uh, principle which I just formulate here and do not prove. So we give gamma, p points, local parameters there, uh, a non-special divisor d. This uh, uh, geometric uh, uh, set of data gives uh, uniquely up to a Scalar factor uh, functions, uh, the set of functions uh, psi upper j. Okay? And we take, uh, well, ah, probably uh, now I uh, understand, uh, probably now I understand as the question uh, by Nadia. I could, uh, uh, I could uh, formulate it as follows. Take uh, uh, asymptotic behavior in the following form, psi j, uh, I own it. Uh, uh, almost everything here. 
uh, is equal, uh, I omit constant here, uh, e to uh, k i x upper i uh, delta i j plus o of k minus one. K I minus one. Let's take uh, uh, this function. It's uh, it's given uniquely. Then take the next term in this. Take uh, the next term uh, uh, at this expansion. It looks uh, like v i j over k i. Take this matrix, oh, sorry. Take the matrix formed by these elements and we obtain, uh, and we get solution. Neither, uh, it's uh, more clear now or not. Uh, not, but uh, maybe I something understand wrong. I think that uh, ps, ps, uh, this uh, function psi is unique for this uh, uh, spectral data, and uh, but here we have uh, n functions j uh, where j is one, j. Is yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, we should uh, 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 something one more um, uh, spectral uh, datum uh, P, P J, and I don't understand why P J is uh, 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 fixed uh, for psi J. Um, I, I don't. Uh, PJ is not fixed by by, uh, by psi j. Psi j is fixed by uh, uh, by giving gamma uh, p one and so on p n uh, uh, and so on up to d. Yes. Yes. Gamma. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, this I, I understand. But uh, it, it has index in J, so we have n functions. No? There is the same index in the Kronecker symbol. So for each J, you have the Kronecker symbol with this J. So you have this function psi J. Okay. And uh, it's also true. Okay, uh, psi j uh, has different uh, uh, different expansions at at p one and so on p n. Yes. Uh, and coefficients of uh, uh, these expansions um, get index uh, index i, and this is why it appears. J appears because we take uh, uh, the function psi j, and i appears because we take its expansion at the point pi. Yes, but okay. why we have uh, n functions psi j, psi one, psi n? Uh, 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 okay, uh, uh, this is uh, because Okay, good. Uh, this is because um, uh, this is what Lena just said. We, uh, we have index, uh, uh, index j uh, uh, in this expansion. Okay, it's, okay, now I understand the question, the reason of the question at least. Psi j. Uh, 
So we, we fixed uh, uh, this uh, unique function by this uh, uh, coefficient uh, in the composition. Um, uh, it's more rough. Uh, uh, it's more rough fact. Uh, psi j, the expansion of uh, psi j starts uh, with zero order term at, at uh, pj and with first order term at pi where i is not equal to j. They have different orders at, uh, at these points. Okay. This is what Le Lena, this is what Lena actually said. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Okay, good. Thank you. Good, thanks Lena. Um, so, uh, and uh, the matrix V, sorry, uh, matrix V, uh, which we, which comes from this data uh, gives us uh, a solution. And th this is what uh, I'm going to prove in detail. And um, afterwards, next lecture uh, uh, to obtain exact, uh, ex I, I mean, explicit formulas uh, uh, for the solution, starting from this uh, idea. Well, uh, let's start from simple facts. Before I uh, before I uh, start uh, uh, proving simple facts, let me uh, repeat once more. This function, uh, this functions uh, psi j. Uh, which are called baker achiezer functions, uh, are a very powerful tool due to uh, Krechever, uh, which uh, enable one to make algebraic geometry to calculus. And you will see uh, why, uh, why I am telling so. Now, uh, the first, uh, uh, let, me, let me formulate the first uh, lemma. If we take um, that uh, Psi J satisfies uh, this uh, simple uh, linear equation with uh, functions uh, with coefficients V i J. Um, let me uh, recall that everything here uh, depends, uh, every function here, including v i j, depends on x bar, depends on x upper one and so on, x upper n. Uh, assume we uh, uh, already have proven these equations, then by crossed differentiation, we easily obtain uh, their, uh, what is called their compatibility conditions. These are compatibility conditions of these equations. So the second relation is just a direct, uh, just a um, direct, um, consequence uh, of lemma one. And uh, I omit uh, the proof of the second and will only prove the first. Well, but uh, excuse me, please. I'll just uh, ask my wife to give me uh, a cup of water <laughs> because it's Difficult to be speaking long <laughs> without <laughs> without a bit of water.
Воды, воды, воды в карту. Okay, sorry. So uh, I would like uh, prove this uh, lemma one. Um, so we have uh, psi j equal to uh, I omit the constant uh, e uh, x i k uh, uh, k x i sorry <laughs> x i k i delta uh, delta i j plus mu Well, uh, uh, just take uh, its uh, partial derivative uh, in xi um, uh, by Leibniz rule. Uh, we first differentiate uh, the first factor and um, obtain this one, and the second uh, factor is without any. Uh, in, uh, uh, looks how it was, and um, then we uh, just uh, differentiate uh, the second factor. Chronic um, civil disappears. Um, we obtain a derivative, a derivative uh, of v i j or k. Uh, and here, oh, uh, and uh, here I had to write uh, ki minus two, ki minus two everywhere. It's my mistake. Sorry. <coughs> uh, uh, well, for i uh, and j, uh, which are non-equal. Um, Uh, the first term, uh, the, the first uh, term here, uh, vanishes, and um, <clears throat> we have uh, this relation, and um, we take um, the difference, which is written here, uh, partial derivative of uh, psi upper j minus v i j psi upper i. And <clears throat> we can uh, we can see that uh, it uh, satisfies to all requirement uh, all requirements uh, to a Baker Heiser function. And um, for the reason it vanishes, uh, for the reason it vanishes uh, at the point pi. Uh, we conclude it's trivial. Uh, and uh, for this reason, just wait a little bit, uh, it disappears. Okay, for this uh, reason, we um, obtain uh, the relation uh, in the uh, right lower corner, which is actually the statement of the lemma. So this lemma uh, is proved. Uh, what I said, uh, that the relation uh, 
the relation uh, V I J X K is equal to V uh, I K V K J. There is no sum, no summation K. <coughs> is the first uh, condition uh, um, which is sufficient. Uh, first of the two conditions which are sufficient uh, in order V is a solution. The second condition uh, is the following. The sum should uh, vanish for every pair I and J. For every pair y, uh, i and j, uh, uh, and um, you see, uh, we have uh, no freedom, uh, no freedom, uh, no freedom, fr freedom in changing, changing of the uh, uh, fun function uh, psi. Psi j. What we have is a freedom in the choice of spectral data, in particular of uh, a Riemann surface gamma. Gamma. And the lemma two here claims that our condition. This the required condition um, is true if, if gamma is uh, uh, an n-sheet covering uh, of the Riemann sphere. So controlling geometry uh, of the Riemann surface gamma, we can control properties um, uh, of expansions of baker hazel functions. This is what I mean, say, saying that um, baker hazel function is a very powerful tool uh, of making uh, algebra geometry to uh, calculus. Good. Let me um, explain why this lemma um, is really true. Uh, assume, assume gamma uh, is an end sheet covering uh, over Riemann sphere. So let's symbolically draw Riemann sphere like this. And here is the point infinity. Assume gamma is an end sheet covering. Then uh, the full Uh, the full pre-image of infinity in general position consists of n points, namely points P1 and so on Pn, because, okay, uh, Um, 
sorry. Uh, I have to, uh, I have to tell uh, that this is gamma. I have take gamma uh, in such way that um, uh, let's, let, let's denote uh, the current map by lambda. Uh, Mm. Uh, I have to um, take P1 and so on Pn uh, in pre-images uh, of the infinity. Sorry, I must require this. Uh, so I require that uh, la uh, lambda has poles uh, only at points uh, P1 and so on, Pn, and uh, nowhere else. Then the function lambda, function lambda, can be chosen as a local parameter uh, in the neighborhood of any point P1, and so on, Pn. I mean, uh, lambda, min, uh, uh, lambda to minus one uh, can be chosen uh, as a local parameter uh, in the neighborhood of uh, any point because lambda minus one uh, is locally uh, is a meromorphic uh, uh, function uh, in the neighborhood of uh, any of any of these points, and it's regular. Uh, lambda uh, lambda is regular everywhere except for uh, except for this point. Uh, and um, at this point, uh, it's equal to infinity. So, uh, which means that lambda minus one is equal to zero. So we can, if we have such covering that P1 and so on Pn are uh, pre-images uh, of infinity, we can take in our Asymptotics uh, K I uh, equal to lambda for every I. Questions here. Are there any questions? Are there uh, questions? Uh, Sorry. Uh, yes? I, I, I don't understand. Uh, do you? Uh, Tell about uh, why the um, uh, condition, uh, the sum of y j i x uh, k is zero, uh, uh, is the same that uh, the gamma is uh, anxious. It's not yet current. proven. It's ah, uh, uh, it's quite non-trivial fact which you, uh, which uh, is not yet proven. It's a statement. Okay. Uh, I only. Uh, uh, I only okay. explained uh, that um, this means lambda, uh, lambda for for min minus one can be chosen as a parameter. And so all our yes. asymptotics uh, can be uh, written down uh, uh, in this form. We just uh, get rid of uh, ki yeah. and uh, write uh, lambda instead, okay? Oh, okay, it's okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Sorry. Now on the way, uh, on the way to the, uh, this statement will be proven, uh, hopefully in the end of the lecture. Uh, I would like to, uh, To prove simpler fact, namely that um, 
Psy J, euh, Psy J euh, satisfies uh, the following linear, following linear equation. You see that the sum of uh, all partial derivatives all partial derivatives of psi j is equal to psi j by lambda. Well, uh, it's uh, proven also by uh, a direct calculation. We just uh, take uh, the asymptotics. Mm. Just just take the asymptotics and uh, differentiate it by Leibniz rule, term by term, and um, um, when we uh, differentiate x x i in uh, dxk, oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay, there is something to. Mm -hmm. There is something to get rid of all. <laughs> to get rid of all. Uh, mm -hmm. Good. Well. So um, when we differentiate xa in xk, we obtain this uh, uh, another chronic symbol here, delta ik. So it comes uh, from, uh, from derivative uh, of the exponent and the bracket uh, is without any uh, uh, change. And vice versa, uh, expo uh, exponent here, uh, is without any change, and we differenti differentiate uh, the bracket. Uh, this chronic symbol uh, vanishes, uh, and um, this element phi v i j gives this partial derivative. And finally, um, finally, uh, we obtain the following, uh, we obtain uh, this expression. I mean, uh, finally we obtain this expression. Uh, then we uh, uh, sum these expressions uh, over k, over k, and uh, the sum of I here uh, is fixed, and the sum of uh, all, all delta I K for all K uh, when I is fixed is equal to one. So after summation, this, uh, this factor disappears after summation. And um, mm, uh, here and here, uh, it, it gives just unit, just unit. Uh, and um, <clears throat> uh, what we have uh, is the following, is the following. Uh, uh, we have this expression. Uh, this uh, sorry relation. After, after summation, we have uh, uh, this relation. And again, uh, uh, by uniqueness 
uh, theorem, we conclude that um, <clears throat> uh, this relation holds not only for expansions at the points, uh, not only um, for expansions at the points uh, pi, but it uh, holds globally. Uh, it's actually uh, it's actually um, uh, relation uh, between functions. So I consider this relation to be proved. Now we go on. Uh, observe, we have uh, scalar uh, scalar functions, psi one, and so on, psi uh, n. We organize them uh, to a vector column. Okay. Now, uh, it is a vector function. Uh, it is a vector function on our um, covering gamma. It's vector uh, uh, vector function here. If we enumerate somehow uh, the sheets of this covering, one, uh, two, three, and so on, and take this vector function first, uh, sorry, uh, take a point uh, on the Riemann sphere. Uh, take uh, first uh, the value of this vector function uh, at the pre-image on the first sheet here. Then take its um, value at the pre-image uh, pre on the second sheet, and then on the third sheet. We will obtain uh, a matrix. Say this is the point lambda, lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, and so on. And we obtain uh, this matrix here, which we will call uh, <clears throat> uh, the baker here's the matrix. Uh, in spite, this is not con a conventional uh, uh, term. It's not a conventional term. Uh, don't forget, uh, please, that everything here depends also on uh, bar x. Uh, a question? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, if we uh, 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 if we don't have lambda, uh, we have uh, k one k n. And then it is also a matrix Baker. Uh, if we don't have what? If we don't have a unique uh, lambda uh, and have only n uh, uh, local parameters, k1, kn. Is it uh, also? No, I don't uh, Unique to? We have an English description. And then it means that there is one function lambda, which is a local parameter. And if we have just Uh, просто локальные параметры там n параметров это тоже будет просто называться где просто локальные параметры есть не на каждой точке а только на бесконечности в окрестности бесконечности а мы сейчас ну, на с... каждой точке построили а -а -а, ясно спасибо so uh, one bin uh, the question was uh, why why we need uh, covering why we Uh, cannot uh, do it 
uh, in the situation of local parameters where uh, so, uh, so you mean the covering actually comes from a mirror morphic function right yeah yeah completely completely right uh, oh, okay. this um, this uh, matrix uh, psi will be uh, global matrix function on uh, uh, p, p on one. the curve on, okay uh, not on the curve uh, on the base of the covering, the base of the okay. sphere. Oh, I see. So, uh, okay. We start from the tuple, from the tuple of fun of scalar valued functions uh, on the curve gamma. Okay. This uh -huh. is P one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, we start from the tuple tuple of uh, scalar valued functions here, and uh, form a vector valued function, and then over every point, given a point uh, on the base, we take its preimages, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, and evaluations of this uh, vector valued fun uh, vector function uh, at these preimages, and then. And this is uh, this is how we obtain a matrix. And okay. this matrix is very important. is very important thing because only it uh, enables us to uh, uh, enables us to prove uh, the lemma mm, to prove the lemma two. Sorry. Mm -hmm. To, to prove the lemma, this lemma too. We uh, couldn't do it uh, uh, with only scalar valid considerations. Let me go on. Okay. Let me go on. What I have for the, remain, uh, the remainder is just uh, the last step. It will be given, it will be done uh, on three slides. First of all, First of all, we uh, write down the asymptotics for uh, for the baker hazel functions in the matrix valid form. If you uh, think a little bit after lecture, you will see that uh, it's easy. It easy follows from the scalar uh, asymptotics. This delta i j gives uh, the unit matrix E. Uh, and so on. Uh, it's absolutely clear that uh, it's just by definition that V is given by elements V, I, J, and so on. This is just matrix, just asymptotics for uh, baker hazel functions written in, uh, in a matrix valued form. Now we just formally uh, take partial derivative in xk, uh, which uh, <clears throat> psi uh, lower uh, psi zero is given by this bracket. We just formally uh, take its partial derivative by exponent, and then this bracket as it is. Uh, by mm, uh, uh, by derivative of the exponent, it's just derivative of the diagonal matrix. So this matrix is, uh, is nothing but uh, the following uh, e to e to lambda x one and so on e to lambda x n and we take derivative in x k and what we obtain is the following matrix mm, lambda zero and so on zero one zero zero 
where one we have in in the case oh sorry in the case row and case column here we have one and i denoted this matrix by by uh, ek so here is lambda here is the k now um, we want to uh, sum this uh, this partial derivatives over k what we obtain what we obtain is a lower relation and um, it follows from trivial fact that the sum of matrices uh, E K, sum of, of these matrices E K is just a Unix mat uh, a unit matrix, unit matrix. Okay. Now I am a little bit uh, in a hurry and uh, will uh, ask for questions after I finish, okay? Uh, we go on. We take, um, now we, uh, okay, good. We, um, <laughs> we would like to take the sum of logarithmic uh, derivatives uh, of psi, which uh, means that we uh, every um, every summand we multiply by psi to minus one from the right, and we uh, take account of, uh, of this expansion of psi. And for this reason, we take here the sum of logarithmic derivatives. And uh, this bracket is what we have found just at the last uh, uh, slide. Psi xk uh, is equal to this bracket. Mm. Uh, we had also exponent here, but exactly the same exponent comes from psi to minus one. And what we have in the remainder here is psi zero to minus one. In the second summon, summoned, psi, uh, for the reason lambda is a scalar, psi zero and psi uh, zero to minus one, just contrary. And we have a scalar matrix at this place. Well, and here we have logarithmic derivatives of psi zero. But uh, psi zero, we know the expansion for psi zero, it's here. And it's easy to take its derivative, we just have to take derivative of V. And this is what's written here. Sum of derivative of Psi is mm, yes, lambda uh, to minus one, sum of derivative, derivatives of V plus this stuff. Now, uh, okay, we must, uh, uh, we want to multiply it by psi zero mi uh, to minus one. Uh, we know the expansion for psi zero. It's like this. And we easy write down the inverse quantity, the inverse function, matrix function. We only should 
to put minus here instead plus. And multiplying this expansion by this expansion, we see that uh, the sum of logarithmic derivatives of psi zero is nothing but lambda, uh, lambda two minus one to the sum of partial derivatives of the matrix field up to a term of order minus two. Well, and finally, uh, altogether, we have we have uh, the, the sum of um, uh, we have uh, altogether we have uh, um, uh, this expansion uh, for the sum of logarithmic derivatives of psi. But uh, we can uh, uh, we can uh, calculate the same quantity independently. We uh, uh, to this end we um, must use uh, uh, we have to use this scalar scalar valued relation which we have uh, uh, proven before we have proven before uh, if we um, okay um, We had uh, we had two uh, two relations uh, where we, uh, where this partial derivative uh, were involved. Uh, let me uh, just recall. Uh, this is the second one, and this is the first one. Combining them, we uh, combining them, we obtain uh, independently, just element by element, that uh, the the following relation uh, takes place. I mean, the full this relation takes uh, takes place this is uh, we can uh, derive from previously proven uh, scalar valued identities and is there an sorry oh. uh, please uh, fir first Nadia and then who was the second uh, uh, Sasha or Bean uh, I'm left again sorry <laughs> Uh, who who I am? I don't see you. Uh, it will be okay. Good. Uh, so uh, lady first. Uh, it was Lena, not Nadia. But ah, okay, uh, I, good. Want, I wanted to ask: Is there uh, is there an extra psi here? Because uh, Lena, please once more. Uh, uh, is there an extra psi here in this formula because uh, it looks like there should be uh, just lambda or... Oh, yes, you are uh, completely right. Uh, you are completely right. Uh, here there is an extra psi, this one. We should erase it, okay? Mm. Uh, <laughs> So 
just um, good now okay yes thanks and and then then it's it looks completely like this one okay good uh, so now we compare uh, now we multiply it uh, good uh, we could erase uh, now we, we can take uh, psi fr from the right uh, to the left and compare these two quantities compare uh, uh, their expansions here we <clears throat> Uh, yes. Um, uh, here we uh, would have just lambda, and for this reason, uh, this sum is equal to zero. Okay. Is it clear? We, we just compare compare two expansions. Well, so uh, we um, assuming that our uh, assuming that uh, our uh, curve gamma uh, was um, is a ancient uh, covering. We, uh, we were uh, able to uh, derive this identity. But uh, sorry, um, Van Bin, uh, your question. Oh, okay, um, I have the a same question actually, the extra precise. Okay, thank you, thank you. This is my fault. So, uh, may I also ask uh, maybe a stupid question? Yes. Uh, so do we have any restriction on n? For example, do we need n to be uh, sufficiently large to have such a lambda? Uh, n? Uh, uh, sorry, and a little bit slower. I don't understand. Uh, n uh, can cannot be large or can, can be... Uh, uh, large as well as small, uh, it is just arbitrary. Uh, uh, so it's just uh, arbitrary but fixed. Please repeat uh, your question. Uh, sorry. Uh, so I noticed there, to have such a such a lambda, actually, uh, you mean we have to find such a lambda, which is a meromorphic function on the Riemann surface, uh, which has uh, exactly simple poles at n points. Right. Uh, yes. So, yes. Yes. Yeah. But 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 for the existence of such a, a lambda, do we do we need the n to be uh to be large enough? Because if, for example, if n is just a one point, it might not be true to find such a meromorphic function lambda. Okay. On the uh, okay. Uh, uh, and. Uh... Uh, n equal to two is already sufficient. N equal to two. Okay. Uh, then we have, uh, then we have uh, two sheet covering, and everything works. We will uh, obtain a solution with matrices two by two. Okay. Okay. And um, I. Also think uh, it will be something uh, not completely stupid if n is equal to one. Yes, we just uh, just our gamma will be the same as p one, but you we, are right. We will we will obtain something. Oh, okay, so but but if you have a double cover, then the Riemann surface is necessarily uh, a hyperubiquitic curve, right? Okay, so it, it doesn't contradict to anything. Okay. Well, uh, I would like to stop 
here for today. And for, for the next time, uh, I'm planning to give uh, theta functional uh, formulas uh, for V. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. More thank questions? You. Okay. If not, then thank you, everybody, and goodbye. <laughs>